and welcome to British Ants. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon should you wish to be uh, informed of any future videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to create one of these. A formicarium for a leaf cutter colony or another large colony on a budget. So all these parts are available uh, online uh, from various places or relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things. So if you wanted to create one of these for a leaf cutter colony, you will save yourself about £140 and it's fairly simple. And not only that, you'll be left with all the tools to uh, create other little masterpieces. Stick around. Thank you. So here we have the contents of the box, which is a um, Hagen fish tank. Um, we've got some other parts here. We don't need these, uh, but it actually worked out cheaper to buy the complete set than just the um, the actual container. Um, so why not? So we'll just have to discard those to one side. We don't need those. Uh, as it turns out, we can't use any of those bits either because um, it does require water in there to use the lighting that comes with the set. But uh, Moving forward, we've got the tub. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't um, set the camera up correctly on this one. But we're using a drill uh, cone drill bit and up the length of the, the spire of the cone. And it's actually got the millimetre um, measurements uh, for the hole that it will leave. So we've already just drilled the hole, so we sped forward here. Unfortunately, you can't see that. And we're just clearing out the plastic that's uh, left over. Just checking that the fitting we've got, which is a 20 millimeter. Uh, when drilling uh, acrylic, uh, it's usually best to go for something around four millimeter thick um, and never press down on the plastic. Um, just let the weight of the drill itself um, drill the hole. If you force it, then you will split the acrylic. So it's worth taking your time and uh, maybe using a little smaller piece like the piece that we just featured to um, practice on before you actually go at it. Uh, here we have some um, very fine mesh. This is left over from one of the former carriums. Uh, again, we just need a very small piece of that so we can just cut that with a pair of sharp scissors. So here's one we did earlier. Uh, we made this hole slightly smaller and we've glued down a, a plain white washer just to uh, make it look a bit cleaner. So here we go on to transferring the colony. So this is a tray that we use uh, for various projects, kind of behind the scenes, moving larger colonies around. Um, you will always get escapes, so it's important that you're prepared for those so we use this large uh, landscape tray that we used to uh, used to sell but we don't anymore um, but it's become very useful for transferring colonies over um, as it stops the ants from escaping all over the property so the anti-slip is applied to a very clean surface uh, and we just go in the corners with a um, paintbrush you don't want to puddle the anti uh, the anti slip; uh, it becomes ineffective. It's usually best to let the um, anti slip bond with the the plastic for about five or ten minutes in a warm room. Uh, if you put it on uh, to a cold surface in a cold room, you'll find that the bond isn't as good, but it will improve as the room warms up. So here we're just clearing out the the old feeding area. We try where possible to feed them uh, or put branches in there because they're just easier to pick out with a pair of tweezers. So now we go on to transferring the colony. Uh, we've had it set up in a fish tank. Um, fish tanks don't actually uh, do very well for smaller colonies I find. Uh, the glass tends to uh, cool down quite quickly. Uh, this colony hasn't been heated, uh, we keep it on a high shelf 
uh, as a result, the temperature further up on the shelf is a lot warmer. Um, so it doesn't require us to um, add a heating mat or anything like that. The room generally doesn't go below uh, 18 Celsius. And because we've got it quite high, the temperature generally up there is about 24.5, which is pretty spot on for this species. Um, the species is Atacephaloides. Um, there we've just simply used the kitchen utensils, which they've become very handy. I put a bit of anti-slip on the handles uh, to stop any of the larger uh, ants from running up there and biting me, because there are some soldiers in there. You can see the um, the older fungus is yellow, um, so the excess uh, on the underside you'll see. I just panned out, but um, or panned in. Uh, but I've put the the yellow towards the entrance um, of the nest, and over the course of the next week, they will remove all that old fungus uh, that's spent, so it's no longer viable. Um, having moved the colony. They will go through that and uh, sort it out themselves. So I've popped the lid on. Um, I've had this set up before. I had the lids made from a plastics company on uh, eBay. Uh, I think it cost me about ten pounds each, cost price. Um, and the the unit, as I said, was quite cheap. Um, I always use twenty millimeter fittings uh, because they're uni uh, universally available. Um, so if you go for larger fittings, like some of the other suppliers that use 37 millimeters, then you're going to have problems with having to pay out £10 plus per fitting. Um, whereas if you go for 20 millimeter, it's a fairly universal size that's used in the plumbing industry. Um, so it does help to keep the cost down. I mean, these fittings are generally about £2.99 each. Uh, and the 20 millimeter pipe also means that you won't get the ant setting up gardens within. Now the colony has been set up here for a week and as you can see there's quite a lot of spoil um, left here. You can see this is all the old fungus that they've pulled out. Um, the fungus garden should always be lower than the nest uh, to encourage the ants to remove it. Um, but you can see that the moisture's come off the fungus and it's actually travelled up the pipe. Uh, and that needs to be cleaned and we need to vent that section so that it doesn't happen in future. So these are all things that um, will need tweaking once you've done this kind of setup. So there we have it. So we've cleaned all this out. Uh, we're just adding some winter jasmine, privet and hellebore um, into the outworld. We'll anti-slip the the lid and uh, pop that back on. Uh, we made alterations, as I said. Uh, the anti-slip is applied to the same um, lid that we had on there before. Um, we've just wiped it down to make sure it's nice and clean. Again, don't use lots of anti-slip. You don't need a lot of it. Um, a tub like this will last me a year. Uh, the last time we actually reapplied this. Um, was some months ago with a paintbrush that's damp from what you've just seen uh, then just touch up around the sides uh, you need to be careful here because if you do apply too much anti-slip um, as I have done myself before above the entrance to the outworld um, when the room warms up the anti-slip will run and you'll create a barrier so the plant the um, the ants can't take their leaves back to the nest so um, less is more. You can always apply more uh, and obviously just observe the colony. So there we are. Um, we can just top that up or remove any twigs uh, and add fresh material for them. So going up the nest, we've cleaned out the outworld which should reduce a lot of the moisture. And we've added that vent to the side to get a bit of airflow from the outworld, uh, from the, the, uh, the dump area to the uh, main colony so airflow through there will keep that dry. So we've made the alterations to the setup. We've uh, increased the ventilation um, which should help remove that moisture in the tube. We've also emptied the uh, the dump chamber because a lot of moisture was coming up from that 
uh, we cleaned up the outworld, provided them with some new leaves to take back to the fungus garden, and uh, they're all ready to go. Uh, we'll leave you with images of this uh, colony going about its business. Um, if you're wondering why some of them are running in the other direction, it's because I just hit the pipes and it sent them, uh, a few of them into a bit of a scurry. Uh, don't forget, you can leave a comment below and feel free to subscribe. Um, thank you very much.